Yes. Ah, nice one, mate. Easy. Look, I gotta go to work, but yeah, I didn't want you to waste the day away. So I day. left you a challenge, and I want you to do it all in one day. One exception. I also want you to use the lazy Susan again. So I'm gonna okay. leave this with you. Good luck. And Fine. See you all tonight. Right. I'll go in the big box. Bye then. What's he on about? Let's see what this is about. Lazy Susan, my ass. Lazy Susan, easy, we've got this. Challenge. Make a fun short film with the pigs being the stars of the show. Guinea pigs being the stars of the show. Oh, my next round starts. Hmm. This leads me to an idea. Okay, so in my head, I picture a lot of electric build-up, like a classic versus scene that you get in fighting games. And I don't know how I'm gonna do this scene yet, but I quite like the idea of the guinea pigs popping up one at a time on their own platforms as kind of like a an entrance to introduce each character with some electric bolts, some smoky effects, and their names in lights, etc. So there we got Marley and then we got Mo. They will both pop up. Again, don't know how to do this yet. And then we'd have our classic kind of beat em up health bars. Uh, so you can see who's winning, either on the left or the right. And say round one, eat. And then we start with the, uh, the nice close ups of each of the characters. So this terrible drawing, if you can make that out, well done. It's uh, the mouth close up uh, being. Uh, Devouring some spinach. Uh, it's very bad, and I can't draw. It's right. And then, then we have some close ups of the claws, and we'd alternate between Marley and Mo. Close ups of the eyes, so you can kind of see the they're, they're sussing each other out. Who's going to take that next bite? And then until one of them is crowned the winner when they've eaten all their spinach. Round two would be cucumber segments. So again, close ups of the veg, and then. Round two starts, and this would crown the victor, hopefully. KO. Like I say, some staticky text, electric buildup. So now we've got our storyboard done, let's go shoot. We've got my beer, and let's quickly try and set up something that I can think in my head that's gonna work. It's gonna be a dark scene, so we're gonna have to shut the curtains in the end, but for now, let's just keep it as is. Let's get rid of some of the clutter you don't need to see. And um, let's build the scene, which is gonna be for our guinea pig battle. I'm gonna use this little table for putting the pigs on. Obviously, we've gotta use the lazy Susan, so. Ta da! We're done. We're not done on the dark scene. So I've managed to find this kind of collapsible stool that I use for dog shoots. And with that, we can make a darker scene. So this is gonna be a bit like, a bit like so. We're gonna need a, a background like that. Brilliant. Oh, hi. <laughs> so, as you'll see now, we're gonna have the pigs on the Lazy Susan. This is like the, the intro part where they're spinning around. Uh, does it have to be this way? Maybe this way, it might help. Yeah, now we kind of almost have like, it will look like an inf infinity uh, backdrop once we're finished with the lighting. So, this is gonna be the basics of our background. Let's get some lighting sorted. Okay, that was actually pretty quick to set up. So we've got the the Godox SL60 light with a grid on, and that is just pointing straight down. We've just got a desk lamp uh, plugged in that I have managed to, can you expose for that please? I've managed to just wedge in some blue gel in there and then we've got this aperture 
it was it F7 or something? And I've got that set to tungsten, the warmest color that it can do. So we've got this nice, um, you know, orange and teal either side. And when we close the curtains, which I'll do now, let's see if it makes a good difference. And then once we get our positioning in with the proper camera, it'll be more obviously zoomed in. Doesn't want to focus when it's so dark though. All right, let's get the camera out. So we're using the, the 1DX Mark II with a 100 mil macro lens. And this allows us to get some lovely uh, depth of field and also some sharp detail when it comes into focus. So you can see I've got the Lazy Susan set up central to the frame. You've got the nice teal and orange in play. And uh, let's go get one of the stars of the show. So here we have Marley. Let's go bring him into the set. And he's on. He's rotating. Now the lazy Susan spins one rotation every 60 seconds. <laughs> Everyone wants to get involved with the piggy. Don't we groups? Yeah. Oh, you stink. Hello. Here he comes. It's like a jungle in here, flipping it. Lots of wild animals. So now we know what we're gonna be shooting and how we're gonna be shooting it. Let's get to it and I'll see you on the computer for the editing stage. Okay, so here we are in Premiere and first things first, let's talk about how I start tid the intro scene with the, the Lazy Susan and the techniques behind what I've done. So if we open up the base sequence, you can see that it is literally the same footage just flipped. Uh, obviously it's a, an effect within Premiere just to add horizontal flip. And even if we were to look at the size of the frame, again, you can see it's scaled down and because it's on a nice, almost like infinity black backdrop, we can almost blend it really well together with the other scene, uh, add a slight little crop, which is here, um, just to kind of blend the two together. Now to create the lightning effects, very simple indeed. In Photoshop, if we turn these layers off. I just, for a base plate start, I just imported this backdrop. So I knew kind of what I was aiming for composition wise. Well, first things first, we added some extra lights to the side and the middle. And that is basically our clean backdrop now import them without the backgrounds and you are able to put the layer style on these uh, you can change the opacity so as you can see in premiere when i've got these lights in the background they are actually a photoshop layer and then they come in they flicker same with the orange ones so i almost wanted them to be like a stadium like <laughs> turning the lights on in the end, I decided to make them more lightning. So they're like almost like the buildup and the lightning in the sky from a distance. To do the lightning, very simple. Put this back on. The lightning is, let's just create a new layer for you and show you how we do it. You do a new layer, you go gradient and you fill it black to white. Doesn't matter where. The, the beauty of doing it this way is you can do any kind of gradient and each time you do it, it's gonna be a completely random bit of lightning generated. Now we go filter, uh, what is it again? Render difference clouds, you invert it. And then now all we do is crunch the levels. I find the middle one works best. And then you get this nice lightning shape. You put that on screen mode, obviously in Premiere and black becomes invisible. Boom, we've got some lightning that we can completely move around, scale, mask. And then I just like 
would turn it on and off within Premiere to kind of give the lightning strike effects. And then so by applying those lightning bolts, as you can see, screen mode on the blend, combined with the lighting below, we get this nice, almost like static buildup and electric charge. That is exactly the look I wanted for from the storyboard. The font was quite important to choose for getting the right look for a fighting game. I settled on this font because it looked quite similar to kind of like an old, maybe Tekken 3 era kind of style. Squashed it a bit, added italics. Also, I've added these layer styles, which I'll turn on and off. Just started with blank, we beveled it, stroked it in a glow, the color of choice, and then a drop shadow to separate it from the background. And the beauty is you can bring all of that in as one layer into Premiere and use it. With 4K footage from my Canon 1DX, many times I had it duplicated files because I was obviously having two 4K files on screen at once, shrank down, flipped horizontal. The computer was struggling a lot. The scenes where they're eating, a lot more straightforward because there's no complex stuff to it other than when we do like them side by side, like the cucumber shot here. That's just a clever mask around uh, one of the pigs. And because they're on a black background, we're able to do a nice blend in between the two here. As you can see there, Marley's on the bottom, put Mo on top, add a mask around him. There's the crop. As you can see, we'll turn it off. And yeah, that's what it would have been if we didn't have the crop on it. Nice bit of feathering, and it looks like they're part of the same scene. To make it consistent, you probably might have noticed all of Moe's actions actually are reversed because I filmed with the orange light on the left and the blue light on the right. But because I wanted it to be like a symmetrical image, I needed the orange light to be on Moe's right. So every clip of Mo was horizontal flipped. So it looked like it was consistent throughout. Always on the left for Mo is blue, even on the close-ups. That's what it would have been like out of camera. I added a nice bit of orange glow to represent the side light and then a nice blue light to represent the middle light that's from the scene. Which one's this? The orange, that's on linear light. Because if you had it on normal, it goes all misty. Whereas linear light almost interacts nicely with the um, the blacks of the eyes and stuff, and it makes the highlights really crunchy and pop color-wise. The blue is on a screen mode. If I made that normal as well, again, it just makes it too foggy. Don't like that. You want to be able to see the actual texture below. So obviously when the color starts going to a transparent bit of color, you see the texture below in the scene. So you can now see the dust on the floor and all that jazz. I think I need a drink. Music was very important. Having played a lot of beat em up games, mainly Tekken over the years, I I know the style of music, but I don't know the genre. It's almost like industrially urban-y, almost like wipeout, futuristic-y. I wouldn't even know how to search for it. So luckily I stumbled across uh, an artist called Illudent on Epidemic and um yeah i found a couple of songs that were contenders if you imagine contenders ready and then that gets going so you can picture it ko another song of theirs which is the one i went with in the end Contenders, ready. Round one, fight. K.O. As you can see, it's got the vibe we need and wanted. I wanted. And then it's got this, this cool breakdown bit, like contestants. Get ready for the next round. To me, it was perfect. Sound effects? Sure. All we used 
again, epidemic, some lightning kind of background noises to help bring those lightning strikes to life. You know, straightforward stuff. Couple of them, easy. What's this gun rifle? Nah, didn't use that one. So yeah, put all that together. I then recorded a, a voiceover of like, contenders, ready. Added some sound effects to it within Premiere, which made it sound like a fighting game to me. And then export, upload, reap the rewards of my millions of views. So let's stop talking about the behind the scenes. This video is far too long already and you probably have all unclicked anyway, which is why I've uploaded the video as a separate video. But here it is, the final edit. One more time for those that wanted to stick around and see it again. My two guinea pigs in battle. Battle pigs. Versus contenders ready. Round one. I like it. I mean, to me, that was a bit of fun, very experimental. The challenge was set and I like to, uh, like to think I fulfilled the brief from my, uh, from me. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing more challenges and that's kind of the direction I'm gonna take this channel, I think. I want to, I want to push myself creatively, whether it's in film or photography, with random fun challenges that uh, try something new each time. Already got something in mind for the next one. When I start getting some followers, hint, hint, subscribe, please. Uh, maybe you can leave some comments onto the challenges you want me to do, and I will certainly put them into a hat. And it'd be great one day to start picking them out at random, doing them, and fulfilling the brief for you guys. I'll catch you on the next video. And thanks for watching and supporting. Like it, comment, share, and subscribe. <sighs> K.O. Oh.